The latest on the mosque massacres that have really shaken New Zealand and the entire world. There is a 28-year-old suspect and avowed white supremacist making his first court appearance. His face blurred according to local laws. Meanwhile, memorials overnight for the victims. 49 people, both adults and children, gunned down while at prayer. We begin our coverage with ABC's Will Carr, who's right there on the ground in Christchurch, New Zealand. Will, good morning. With New Zealand is still on high alert this morning. Before this, the worst thing that anybody around here remembers happening was a cluster of earthquakes back in 2010 and 2011. The difference, they say, those earthquakes were an act of Mother Nature. This was an act of evil. The man accused of the worst mass shooting in New Zealand history appearing in court for the first time. His face is blurred per local law, but his alleged crimes are clear. Wearing all black, clad in a helmet and a bulletproof vest, the suspect allegedly entered the Al Noor Mosque in the city of Christchurch, ruthlessly opening fire during a packed Friday prayer service before driving to his next target, the Linwood Mosque, three miles away. People just frightened in terror, and just devastated, just running for their lives. It just felt like, you know, you're in a, like a, a traumatic movie or like a horror movie. People getting slaughtered, people just treated like animals. Police say 36 minutes after receiving that fateful call at 1.42 p.m., the suspect was taken into custody. So our staff, who were well equipped, uh, did engage with that person and again put themselves in real danger to keep the community safe from further harm. There were two other firearms in the vehicle that the offender was in and it absolutely was his intention to continue with his attack. Authorities say that suspect and possibly more killing almost 50 men, women and children, injuring dozens more. The terror attack overwhelming the local hospital in a nation unaccustomed to mass shootings. It's unusual for surgeons in this part of the world to deal with gunshot wounds. Authorities say Brenton Tarrant, a self-proclaimed racist with a deep hatred for immigrants, was heavily armed with semi-automatic weapons and left IEDs behind. I can tell you one thing right now, our gun laws will change. President Trump bowing to help in any way possible. I told the Prime Minister that the United States is with them all the way, 100%, whatever they need, we will be there. While authorities are still pouring through a live stream recording of the attack and a lengthy hate-filled message posted online by someone purporting to be the suspect. Police are aware of distressing material relating to this event being online. This shattered community is praying. There is peace within that community, Lord. Did you ever imagine that a shooting like this could play out here in New Zealand? No, never. I mean, I don't think I'd be alive to witness one ever. Authorities arrested four people in all. They've already released one and are trying to figure out if there's a connection between the other two. New Zealand does not have the death penalty, and people here are trying to wrap their minds around a proper penalty for an attack of this magnitude. Eva. All right, Will Carr, thank you. The suspect's manifesto praised President Trump as a symbol of white identity. The president was asked about the threat of white nationalism by our own Terry Moran during an event in the Oval Office on Friday. You see today white nationalism as a rising threat around the world. I don't really. I think it's a uh, small group of people that have very, very serious problems. I guess if you look at what happened in New Zealand, perhaps that's a case. I don't know enough about it yet. They're just learning about the person and the people involved. Uh, but it's a, certainly a terrible thing. Terrible thing. Yes? Mr. President. Well, the Prime Minister of New Zealand was later asked if she agreed with President Trump's assessment of white nationalism, and she flatly responded no. Joining us to talk about this is John Cohen, former counterterrorism coordinator of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. First, John, we hear these terms a lot. What exactly is white supremacy or white nationalism? Yeah, people who subscribe to the white nationalistic or white supremacist beliefs, they believe white people of European descent are superior to non-whites. And further, they believe that society is better when white people live separate from non-whites. And further, they tend to believe that the problems of society, whether it be crime, whether it be terrorism, uh, whether it be economic issues, are due to non-whites, whether they be uh, Jews or Muslims or uh, other ethnic minorities, immigrants um, are allowed to live together with white people. 
We've seen more and more of these displays in the past several years. Charlottesville, the Pittsburgh synagogue shooting. We're, we're seeing this both here in the U.S. and all across Europe. What is behind this recent rise? Well, there is a rise, and there's a rise in public expression of white supremacist beliefs. It's come out of the shadows. Uh, they've, it's been very public, whether it's in a, a people running for office espousing those views or protests. But we've also seen uh, a rise in violence by people who subscribe to these beliefs, whether it's hate crimes or targeted attacks against houses of worship uh, or, or other locations. Uh, the rise is fueled by two general factors. One, the increased use of social media and the Internet. Uh, it is interconnecting people who, in the past, were separated by geography. Uh, it puts like-minded people in touch with each other, where they can uh, support each other and validate each other's views. They can share violent material. And quite frankly, and this is what has law enforcement very concerned, uh, many of the themes and even the language that's used by white supremacist leaders have found its way into our mainstream political discourse. We now have elected officials in this country uh, who use the same words that white supremacist leaders have used in the past when talking about immigrants uh, or other uh, issues with our society. Uh, and so that, that is, listen, th those words are heard by white supremacists, and those white supremacists who are predisposed to violence feel justified in those violent beliefs. All right, John Cohen, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yeah, we really appreciate that analysis from John Cohen on a Saturday morning.